Hey folks, welcome to the second video about the ticker tape lab. Uh, this is for if you've already made your graphs and you're going to analyze them. Um, so you're going to need your graphs, you'll need this page of the packet, you'll need a ruler and a calculator. Um, first thing about the graphs, your position graph should look something like this, and there should be a trend line on it. Your velocity graph should look something like this, and again there should be a trend line on it. Uh, your acceleration graph, uh, Excel I didn't include in instructions for having a trend line for the acceleration graph on Excel because there's instructions that you should just go to your data table, average all of your acceleration values, and draw a trend line that's a horizontal line at whatever the value was. So for my data that I did, um, I had an acceleration of 20 centimeters per second squared. That was an average, and I just drew a horizontal line there. Uh, you also want to make sure that your, your graphs had the, have all the grid lines, the major and the minor, because you're going to use them to record some values. Minor little light on the printer, uh, I tried to make it so that yours were copied darker. Uh, okay, so let's go through a couple of these and just make sure we understand instructions. So, slope of position versus time graph. Select a time greater than 0.2 seconds. So just for my simplicity, I'm going to choose a time of 0.5 seconds. So this is important. Uh, it identifies the moment that you're going to use on the graph. Uh, the first one says slope of the position versus time graph. The second one says velocity read from the velocity versus time graph. So I'm going to do the velocity first. So all you're doing is going to 0.5 seconds and recording the velocity. Really important. Your trend line now represents your data. So when you go to 0.5 seconds, first of all, if you've done your graph correctly, you will notice that there is no point at 0.5 seconds. Um, second, you are going to select the point on the trend line. And so that trend line is for 0.5 seconds, it shows a velocity of 20. So that's just recording it, so 20. You have to include units. The units of velocity are centimeters per second. Now it says the slope of the position graph. So you go to your position graph. You select the same time. Now there is a point at 0.5 seconds, but we're not gonna use that. Our task is to find the slope of the line at that moment, and so now you have to draw a tangent line because you can't find the slope of a curved line using your like rise over run or slope formula. So what you need to do is you need to take your ruler and bump it up against the, the trend line at 0.5 seconds. Now, uh, ideally a tangent line only touches the graph at one moment, or at one point. Sorry, ideally a trend line only touches, a tangent line only touches the trend line once. That's really impossible to do by hand. Um, so if you have a bigger ruler, you should draw a longer line, but this is plenty. Now, you've selected the time of 0.5 seconds. What you want to do next is find any two points along the line that you can read clearly and identify the like ordered pair. So none of mine really go exactly through a grid line that I can see, so I'm going to identify this one. So this is 1.15 seconds and 20 centimeters. So that's one of my points. And then kind of hard to see another one, so we'll just say, I'm going to make up here, I'll make an estimate of this one, and I'll say that this is 1.67 seconds, and that's 30 centimeters. Um, so I'm going to find the slope of that, so you can if you want, you can draw a triangle. Um, you can show your work right here. I think for some of this, it says like show the work to the right of the data table. But if you want to do the work right on the graph, that's fine. Uh, and so the slope would be the difference between the y values. So 30 centimeters minus 20 centimeters divided by the difference between the x values. So 1.67 seconds minus 1.15 seconds. And so this is where your calculator comes in handy. So you can do this all at once. Uh, so I do 30 minus 20 divided by 1.67 minus 1.15. And so I get 19.23. So 
So 19 is the slope. Uh, you always want to pay attention for, to units. And so whenever you, like in this analysis, the first box you fill in when you have to do something, so you fill in the time, you pick the time, the first box after that, you're going to have to pay close attention to the units. The second box is going to be easy because velocity is centimeters per second. There's no real like thinking involved. It's just those are the units of velocity. When you found the slope, you do centimeters divided by seconds. And so it's no coincidence that the slope on this line has the same units as the units of velocity. And so you would write, or I would write, 19 centimeters per second. And so that's that. Um, and the rest of them go similarly. I just want to show one more because it's the other major skill here. The next one says area under a graph. So select a time interval of 0.5 seconds um, and determine the area under the graph in that interval. Then go to the corresponding position graph and determine the object displacement. So just for some variety, I'll do one second to one and a half seconds. So I'm gonna do the, again, like the displacement from the position graph first to show you how that works. So one second to 1.5 seconds. So that's here to there. So displacement is change in position. So it's going to be the difference between the final and the initial position. So the initial position of the trend line is really close to 20. So we're just going to say that that is 20 centimeters. And then the position at one and a half seconds is not yet 40. It's one and a half maybe lines below that. So these go up by two. And so we're going to say that this is 37 centimeters. Um, so you can do your work again here or on the graph. The displacement is going to be 37 centimeters minus 20 centimeters. And so that's a displacement of 17 centimeters. So that's the displacement. So displacement is change in position. Um, and that's something that you just do by subtraction. All right, so now the big thing. Area under the velocity graph from one to one and a half seconds. So what you do is you go to one second and you mark the point where the trend line is. You go to one and a half seconds and you mark the point where the trend line is. And then you make a geometric shape. So when it says area under the graph, what it really means is the geometric shape that's bounded by two times. It's also bounded by the trend line and it's bounded by the x-axis. And so in some graphs, you have to like very be very careful about finding the x-axis. But for this graph, since all the velocities were positive, the x-axis is the bottom of the graph. And so your job is to find the area of this shape. And if you turn it sideways, it's a trapezoid. Uh, before we do that, some measurements that are important. This dimension of the trapezoid is 0.5. And because it's along the x-axis, it's 0.5 seconds, because it's actually a measurement of time. Uh, this dimension of this shape that goes all the way from the x-axis to the line, it's like just shy of 40. So we're going to say that that's like 38 centimeters per second. So in other words, that's the velocity of the object at that moment. This one right here is so close to 30. Uh, we can say that this is 29 centimeters per second. Um, and so showing the work here, uh, you're going to find the area. Now, you can also divide this up into a triangle and a rectangle. Um, but I'm just going to do a trapezoid. Trapezoid formula is when you add the bases and divide by 2, and then multiply by height. Another way to say that, that we're going to talk about in class, is the formula for the trapezoid is the average length of the base bases uh, times the height. It's actually like fitting this into the formula of a rectangle. Um, so, okay, the bases are here, because if I like tilt this, like a trapezoid has bases that are two different lengths. If the bases are the same length, then you have a rectangle. Um, and so the two bases, are 29 and 38. 
divide that by two. And then the height of the trapezoid is down here where the time is. And that's 0.5 seconds. Uh, so I'm running out of space. So calculate. Uh, sorry, this is having a lot of trouble focusing. Sorry if like that whole video was just out of focus. Uh, 29 plus 38 divided by 2 times 0.5. And I get 16.75. So we'll round that to 17. Now, uh, that number 17, I had centimeters per second times seconds. So, yeah, I mean, you can do this out if you want. Uh, or you can, like, if you can figure it out in your head, that's fine. You did centimeters per second times seconds. Those seconds cancel, and you're left with centimeters. So this is 17 centimeters is your displacement. Okay, and so that's what we write in here. And look at that. Coincidence? I don't think so. 17 centimeters is the area under the velocity versus time graph. Now you might find that as you continue this analysis, um, that you continue to get results like this or this, you might also find sometimes that the results are a little skewed, and so you have to think about like what that might mean. Uh, but now you've seen all of the, the skills for this. So you can use these as examples. Um, these two work the same way you're finding slope but it's now velocity graph slope and you're reading the acceleration. This one's also area, except it's area of the acceleration graph and delta V. The only thing that I have to say again is when you use this graph, you have to ignore every single dot. The only thing that matters now is this line. This line is your data and every analysis you conduct is with that and I'm sorry again that this is keeping out of focus um, but that's really important that you have a trend line for a reason and that reason is that it now represents your data and so that's that uh, you can like do your own work on your lab and uh, ask questions when I'm in class thanks